it probably would surprise you how poor the writing is of almost every non-native English speaker and even many native English speakers. It always shocks me. I've met people who have really good English, non-native English speakers. Oh, your English is so good. And then I looked at their writing and I was shocked. What? It's the same person? <laughs> the writing, this is the writing of a three-year-old, but you talk so well, <laughs> right? It blows my mind how little people focus on writing. But if you send an email that sounds like you're a three-year-old <laughs> or has very amateur mistakes, how seriously will people take you? Someone who may give you a job interview may decide not to give you a job interview if you have basic mistakes in your writing. Certainly I will. I've had the opportunity to interview people and not chosen them because there were basic mistakes in their email because it shows me ah, this person is not careful. They don't care. Really, they don't really care. They don't want to put the effort in, right? In the same way, if people say, oh, look, please give me some feedback on my writing. Ah, all right. Once in a while. Okay. 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 I look at it. Huh? These, there, you, you spelled oh, so many words wrong. These are spelled. I'm not a... It, Right? It's like I'm a spell checker. You can correct a lot of this basic stuff on your own. If you present that kind of thing to someone to correct, they're going to spend their time doing basic corrections and won't have any time to really spend on making it good. So what I want to say is, this is what I want to talk about. You can fix a lot of things by yourself and you should if you want people to take you seriously with your writing, you should. And it's not that hard. It's not as hard as you think. You just have to be careful. You have to care that it's good and not be lazy. Now, I'm not saying that will fix everything, but there are a couple things that you can keep in mind that I want to talk about and show you that you can use to make your writing better. And I want you to think along with me because we're gonna look at some writing and I want you to look at it and think about what would make it better. But then I want you to have the same attitude when you look at your own writing. Don't just finish it and send it out. After you write it, look at it like it's someone else's. What can I do to make this more clear? Are there any basic mistakes? So before we look at this, there's one thing I want to say. If you just read what you wrote out loud, you're going to find a lot of simple things that you can correct. So that's the first thing. Just write and then read it out loud to yourself. And then you'll find things that, oh my God, I can't believe I wrote it like that. Well, why is it? Well, huh? Why did I use the present tense? I should have used the past tense. Basic stuff. Two, there are tools that can fix a lot of the simple things. Not everything, but a lot of the simple things. One of those tools is... Grammarly. So we're going to look at an example of a paragraph, and we're going to look at it in Grammarly. We're going to see, number one, how useful is Grammarly? Can it fix everything? Is it a magical tool? Number two, if not, then what do we need to do to make our writing better? How can we begin to fix something? Let's take a look. So let me just read this out, and uh, let's see how it sounds. This is our first step. Okay, now I'm, I'm using Grammarly here. I'm composing in Grammarly. I would recommend that you do that, that you write in Grammarly because it can help you find these small things. So making a friend. Since Denise been too busy as a result of her busy working, she didn't have time to meeting people. She decided to make new friend. And while going out to an event, the jet is what happens. She met a someone named Linda who have common interesting. Denise and Lydia now meet one time each week for the coffee and catch up. And Denise feel glad to have friend. 
So I hope that me reading this out loud at least gives you some ideas about what we could start with. Now, you may be asking yourself the question, all right, so the two basic tips, use something like Grammarly, read it out loud at the start, is that all we need to do? How should we actually begin to correct this? Should we start with the big things, like correcting the logic and the ideas, or should we start with the small details, fix the basics, and then look at the big picture? Well, I would say either way could work. It depends on how you think. Let's start with the simple things. Let's start with the simple corrections and see what Grammarly can do to help us or not do to help us. And then we will take a look at uh, some of the bigger, the bigger things, okay? So let's just see what, what Grammarly can help with. All right, so here we go. Grammarly is suggesting that we change working to work uh, as the result of her busy work, okay? So let's do that make it go away but let's think about it does that actually make sense has been busy as a result of her busy work well okay we have an issue here busy busy two busies in one sentence that's a problem but at least it's technically correct now okay uh, didn't have time to meeting people what do we want to do here to meet people didn't have time to meet people all right well that is an improvement okay now we're not fixing everything here we still have room for Im improvement but that is a basic mistake that is now fixed. She decide to make new friend. She, what is the correction here? She decides. All right, now we've got a problem because it looks like this is in, could be in the uh, uh, present perfect tense or it could be in the past tense. She didn't have time is in the past. So this one might be a little bit of a problem, but let's just fix it as Grammarly suggests and then go from there. She decides to make new friend. To make, ah, it's suggesting we use a new friend. Okay, so could we use a new friend or new friends? Well, let's just take Grammarly's suggestion and see what happens. Now Grammarly is suggesting that we remove the, that we, we remove the space before the period. So we'll click on that. That definitely looks better. Punctuation. Punctuation is one of the biggest issues, right? Okay, let's keep going. Um, that, the, T-H-J-A-T. Well, that's a big spelling issue. That's an easy one to fix. Fixed. She met a someone. A someone, huh? So it's suggesting that we remove the uh there. So we'll do that. Now it says, who have common interesting um, oh, we have someone named. Okay, someone named Lydia. Okay, all right. Who have common interesting. Interesting. Who have common interesting. Oh, it's suggesting that we just spell it differently. Okay, well, let's see what happens here. Now we have another issue. Who have common interesting. Okay, who has common. And now it's suggesting that we use. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Interest. Oh. Uh, Okay, but now it's suggesting we change this. <laughs> it's like a keeps going, getting deeper. I'm just taking all the suggestions. I'm not saying all these are right. Uh, I'm just taking the suggestions. Denise and Lydia now meet one time each week for coffee and catch up. And Denise feel feels, right? Because feels does agree with Denise. Glad to have friend, a friend. Okay, so now we've made all the bad red go away. So let's just read it and see if it sounds better, worse, or the same, natural, what? Since Denise has been busy as a result of her busy work, she didn't have time to meet people. She decides to make a new friend. And while going out to an event, that is what happens. She met someone named Lydia who has a common interest. Denise and Lydia now meet one time each week for the coffee and catch up and Denise feels glad to have a friend. All right, is it better? Yes, it's better. We've removed some of the mistakes. Are there problems? Yes, there are problems. All right, so now we go in and we look at what we can do to make this more coherent. What are the big issues when we go through this? Well, there's, a, there's definitely a tense issue, right? Because we say she didn't have time, she decides while going out, that is what happens, then she met someone. So met is in the past, but decides and make, that's in the present. So it's a little confusing, right? So what should we do here? Well, let's just decide what we're going to do. Let's go from the start. Since Denise been too busy. Since Denise, we have to now add 
has been, and I'm going to put instead of two, so busy, since Denise has been so busy as a result of her busy schedule or her busy work. Now that doesn't sound right because we have two busies. Um, due to, I'm going to use due to, okay, because I want to uh, I want to change it up a little bit. Due to her her hectic, I'm going to use a synonym there. So one thing you can do, first go through and make sure the tenses agree, right? You want to make sure the tenses agree. But also, you want to make sure that you're not using the same word too many times. So let's try to use hectic. It's similar to busy, but it's different, and so we have better syntax. Her hectic schedule. Her hectic schedule. Since De Denise has been so busy due to her hectic schedule, she didn't have time to meet people. Now, has been so busy is suggesting we are talking about the present, right? So recently, right? Until the present, it's continuing now. So maybe we should change she didn't have time to meet people. So she hasn't, hasn't. Instead of this one, we're talking about recently, hasn't had time to meet people. Now, meet people is okay. Personally, I think it would be better to say socialize, to socialize much. Now, let's look at our first sentence. Since Denise has been so busy due to her hectic schedule, she hasn't had time to socialize much. This is the part of the sentence that gives us context, that tells us something about the background information, and this is the main thing we want to talk about. Denise, we could make a new sentence. Denise hasn't had time to socialize much. That could be our sentence. But we use the since part to give it a little more context and background. Since Denise has been so busy due to her hectic schedule, she hasn't had time to socialize much. Okay. She decides to make a new friend. But we've used the, the present perfect tense. Okay. So she, we could use past or we could use present perfect. She, let's use recently, because that could happen in the past. She recently decided to try to make new friends. And I'm going to put friends here, because who wants to just make one friend? I'm going to make a friend. It's very creepy. To Now, you are my friend, and we are friends, and I don't need any more friends, because I chose you. You are my friend. <laughs> That's very scary. So she recently decided to try to make new friends. Now you might say to try to make. Is that no? It's okay. It's okay. She recently decided to try to make new friends. Uh, and while going out to an event, let's just start. Why do we have to say going out to an event? It, because if you go out to an event, then you're at the event, right? So why don't we just say at an event and let's give it a time at an event. Uh, a few months ago, and eh, let's say let's say at an event last month. That is what happened. She met someone named Lydia. So here is an issue: is if we were going to keep this, we would have to start a new sentence. That is what happens. This is weird. Let's just, don't be afraid to delete stuff. Let's just delete this. At an event last month, she met someone named Lydia who has a common interest, okay? Now, could we replace this with anything? Who has a common interest? Uh, who, uh, uh, someone, no, 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 no. How about this? Why don't we put with here? Someone with common interests because it's more than one right we say common interest we don't say a common interest you're my friend because we have a common interest only one but it's enough and that's why you are my friend very creepy all right at an event last month last month she met someone with common interests uh named lydia okay and we could say she met someone named lydia who had common interests, uh, but this is okay. She met someone with common interests named Lydia. She met uh, 
someone with comment yeah we could make it better i'm going to keep moving we could go back and improve it but i'm going to keep moving this is a pass i like to do the pass system so i go through once then maybe i go through again and i go through again each time it gets a little bit better right so if you spend five hours on it it gets really good Denise, 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 Denise and Lydia now meet one time each week for coffee and catch up. Okay, now meet one time. We usually say once a week. Now meet once a week. Uh, once a week for coffee to catch up. To catch up. So the reason they meet is to catch up and what they do is coffee they have coffee okay Denise and Lydia now meet once a week for coffee to catch up and you could say uh, Denise and Lydia now catch up cat, catch up once a week over coffee hmm well, now meet once a week how about this to catch up over coffee ooh I like that better Denise and Lydia now meet once a week to catch up over coffee over means we share that that's the thing that we have together Denise feels glad to have a friend okay that's a little cheesy but let's make a new sentence there and keep it all right now let's read through it since Denise has been so busy due to her hectic schedule she hasn't had uh, had uh, let's put much here uh, much uh, time to socialize all right this is better since Denise has been so busy due to her hectic schedule, she hasn't had much time to socialize. She recently decided to try to make new friends. Mm, she recently decided to, uh, let's say, yeah, to, yeah, we'll do, can, this is fine, right? We don't need all that to try to, right? We'll just make new friends. She recently decided to make make some new friends. I like that better. That's better, right? Now notice, I, I'm just playing with this, right? So when I look at writing, when I improve my own writing or someone else's, for me, it's very playful. One thing that's very important is to recognize there isn't one way to say something. There are infinite variations. Just play around. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just playing around. She recently decided to make some new friends. Okay, that's what she decided to do. It's her intention. So she decided that, so we don't have to have try to do that because she's deciding it. It's her intention. At an event last month, month she met uh, someone with common interest named Lydia. She met, she met, uh, she met d -d 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 someone named Lydia. She met, well, here's where we could add something about Lydia. She met uh, an anthropologist. Oops, yeah, we should, we should, that's, yeah. Anthropologist named Lydia. Who, and they soon found Eh, let's see here. All right, how can we make this better? At an event last month, she met an anthropologist named Lydia. She met an anthropologist named Lydia and they hit it off. Oh, that's an expression we could use. Hit it off means they get along well, but that suggests that they have a lot of common interests, right? To hit it off suggests that there are things shared. We get along well because we have things shared. So I actually like that better. Yeah, that's better. At an event last month, she met, oops, met an anthropologist named Lydia, and they hit it off. Uh, she met an anthropologist named Yeah, okay. I like that. Denise and Lydia now meet once a week to catch up over coffee. Denise feels glad to have a friend. Again, I feel like that's cheesy, but it's okay. So let me just read the whole thing. And again, we can spend more time on this. We could do more variations. For the sake of time, we'll just stop it here. But we've gone from bad really bad to yeah not too bad and we could keep working on it and i would encourage you to take this and do your your own version of it all right i'll put it in the i'll put it in the uh, comments or in the description since denise has been so busy due to her hectic schedule she hasn't had much time to socialize she recently decided to make some new friends at an event last month she met an anthropologist named oops 
typo, named Lydia, and they hit it off. Denise and Lydia now meet once a week to catch up over coffee. Denise feels glad to have a friend. All right. This is definitely looking much better. So what can we say about this? I think we can say that there are ways to correct your own writing if you have the right attitude and you use the right methods. Now, whether you start from the big picture, logical, is it fit together, or the small details, I don't think matters so much. Whatever you feel comfortable with. What's important is that you become aware of these small issues and are able to recognize that they're there and you're careful enough to fix them. A lot of this stuff is simple, tense disagreement, things like that that you probably were able to pick out if you were looking at someone else's writing. But when we look at our own, we don't see it. You have to be very careful, right? Use a tool like Grammarly to catch these small mistakes. But the question is, can Grammarly fix everything? Can Grammarly notice everything? No, no. Grammarly is not that smart. It can't look at your whole paragraph and say, you know what, I think that this is not so clear, or hey, uh, that's a weird word to use. Usually not, right? Usually not. Maybe in 10 years we'll have something like that, but not yet. So you have to use that to correct the simple things and then spend time on getting it really tight, clean, logical, right? So that it looks nice, so that it flows, so that you didn't repeat too many words, that sort of thing. So you still have to use your brain and your knowledge. But with a combination of being careful, having an attitude of playfulness, being willing to go through it several times and just play around with it until it sounds good, having an attitude of being careful so that when you write something, other people see you as serious and professional. This will take your writing from this level to this level at your current level of knowledge. I'm not saying you need to learn more stuff. I'm saying all you need to do is be more careful and have the right approach and attitude, use the methods that we talked about, use Grammarly, and you will be better. It's not that hard. And I think if you write every day, if you practice every day, you will get much, much better. So I will leave the example that we looked at in the description. And I want you to play around with it, come up with your own version, do variations, make it different from mine, but close enough. And I'm curious to see what you come up with. And then every day, practice your writing. Because working on your writing can also improve your speaking. It improves your ability to think in the language because you have to be creative. You have to play very important. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. That would be great. Don't forget to subscribe and also check out my full English courses. They're on sale in the links in the description.